Good evening, Basel fans. Welcome here to the Araneta Coliseum for the 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup. Stage is set here tonight. These two teams met four years ago at the 2019 FIBA World Cup. And I am your commentator, Josh Ben, alongside the former coach of Angola, Will Voigt. Take us back to that evening. It was one shot the Philippines had to win the game, but your team prevailed in the end. Could we see some similar action here tonight? Yeah, you know, you think back to that game in uh, 2019, I was fortunate to be a part of. And uh, really, a, you know, a tight game that went down to the wire. And I, I definitely think we could see something similar. Both teams uh, realizing this is a do or die moment for them. Uh, both teams, uh, I, I think, feeling good about the matchup. So what will we see tonight from Clarkson? It's going to be a different defense he's going up against. Angola is going to show a lot more pressure than the Dominican Republic did. They're going to be aggressive in that pick and roll. So I think he's going to have to be more of a facilitator uh, than he was in game one. Now, of course, this is a very different team than from four years ago, but the one thing that you have to remember, this team now no longer led by the legend, Carlos Moraes. It's all about Bruno Fernando, but let us know about some of the other key players of this Angolan team. Yeah, you know, no question, uh, Bruno's a big addition to this group, but, uh, you know, Shilda Dundao, I think, uh, showed the world what he can do. So he's been doing this for a while in all their African qualification games, but, you know, at his size, uh, he's really able to finish above bigger players in traffic, was able to hit some of those moonshot threes uh, that seemed to spark them every time uh, the game got close. Well, this team coached by the great Pep Glados, and again, they got off to a rough start. Well, you know, we say rough, of course. They were able to hang in there with the Italians, but it's going to be a tough rematch for the Angola national team. The Philippines, on the other hand, some big names, and there's only one name right now that all the fans are talking about, the former NBA sixth man of the year, Jordan Clarkson. Yeah, I mean, no question. Uh, you know, I think he showed just how important he is to that team uh, against the Dominican Republic. You know, obviously, when he fouled out, that had a huge impact on the game. Uh, but, you know, as I mentioned before, it's going to be a different team he's facing. He's going to see a lot more pressure and trapping on the ball. Uh, be curious to see if maybe they use him off the ball a little bit more this game, uh, try to, you know, get him some open looks and a catch-and-shoot variety. Well, there's J.B. Malonzo, of course, the high-flying athletic superstar. But now coming out here, Chuma Fajardo, one of the greatest players in the history of Philippine Basketball Association. He had 16 points against the Dominican Republic, a very good input from him. No question. You know, five for five from the floor, delivered some huge baskets for them. Uh, you know, they're going to need that from him again uh, tonight. Now coming for the Philippines now, Dwight Ramos. An unknown gem discovered by Tab Baldwin was playing university basketball in the USA, but then decided before quitting the game of basketball to go to Ateneo. Japan Vagula 
three FIBA World Cups in 2014, 19, and today. But they're now coming. It's AJ Adu, who you know, quoted by Carl Anthony Towns, said great defense from the young AJ, and also made Carl Anthony Towns a better player. That's a massive accolade. Yeah, no question. They've added a lot of athleticism and youth to this group. Much bigger team than they've had in the past. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, you can see the Italians fully short of the Dominican Republic. That makes things very interesting now in this group because we could have the Philippines go one-on-one -on -one as well as the Italians, which would make things exciting going into the final day. But now, we ask you kindly to stand and pay respect and homage to the national anthems of both Angola and the Dominican Republic, excuse me, and the Philippines. The Dominican Republic currently top of Group A, followed by the Italians. And now it's time to pay our respects. Ladies and gentlemen, we now can watch you to stand for the national anthems. We begin with the gentlemen of Angola. National anthems of these two beautiful countries have been sung, and now the players of both the Philippines and Angola will shake hands with each other, pay each other homage. But, Coach, we're now going to get set to introduce our three officials for this magnificent game. Well, our officials, for this one, we have three of the very best. We have Martin Skoslovskis coming from Latvia. From Croatia, we have Martin Vulic, and, of course, from Hungary, we have Norbert Lugosi. Well, there are our three referees for tonight's game. And there is the ball, the ball that we will take home. We'll leave this one to our final victory. Now, you got to think coming into this game, of course, the starting lineup is going to be crucial. We saw a lot of Scotty Thompson in the opening game against the Dominican Republic. But, you know, maybe Keeper Ravenna probably could have played a few more minutes for the Philippines. Yeah, that's right. I, I was actually really surprised that uh, Coach Reyes chose not to come back with him in that second half. I thought he gave them really good minutes in the first half. Big spark plug coming off the bench. Well, Jason Gonzalez, along with Shilde Dudal, Jill Sapango, Bruno Fernando, and Benficus Eduardo Francisco. I mean, some of these players you know very well, Coach. But what can you expect from Shilde Dudal? I mean, he's the engine behind their team. You know, when he's getting out in transition, pushing the ball, he's getting people involved. And his pesky defense is 
the head of the snake for uh, for this really tough Angola team. Well, Bruno Fernando in his last game against the Italians, 13 points, five rebounds shy of a double-double, a member of the Atlanta Hawks. Well, there's a man we just talked about, Shilde Dundal. I mean, he took some crazy three-point shots in that game against Italy. But, you know, as the saying goes, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Well, he needs some people to come along with him. You know, that's been a challenge for Angola is finding that perimeter three-point shooting. Uh, you know, obviously he stepped up, but he's going to need some of these other players. Maybe Gonzalez uh, can be somebody that can help him. Well, Pep Claros, the head coach of Angola. You know, it's always a privilege to coach one of the giants of African basketball. I know Angola historically have always been one of the greatest, but he's now realized that this is becoming a tough job because they have to win it, you know, on the road here in front of the home crowd. And now we're going to take a look at the Philippines, led by Jordan Clarkson, fouling out in the opening game against the Dominican Republic. He found it quite tough, but again, you know, his offensive input, it seemed to be the only driving force for the Philippines. Well, you know, he took 24 shots in that game, but uh, as crazy as it sounds, I, I didn't feel like he forced anything. So, you know, the Dominican Republic was content to stay in a drop with their bigs. He was able to get downhill, and a lot of those shots were good ones for him. I don't think he's going to have those same opportunities tonight. Scotty Thompson in the lineup with Dwight Ramos, A.J. Adu, who will be going to the B-League in Japan next year off the back of injuries at the University of Toledo. But Juma Fajardo, the big man, the veteran of the PBA, the San Miguel Beerman. Well, Jordan Clarkson, the former sixth man of the year in the NBA, currently playing with the Utah Jazz. As we mentioned, 28 points, three rebounds, and three assists shy of a potential triple-double in that opening game. You know, you're saying that he's probably not going to get that same success, but where is the offense going to come from the Philippines? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I, I, I think what it has to be, and maybe, you know, we see Dwight Ramos coming up here, I think that his teammates have to be ready to cash in on the rotating defense of Angola. They're going to be very aggressive at the point of attack, so probably we'll see a lot of traffic from them. Can Dwight Ramos step up and be that secondary scorer that they're going to need tonight? Well, Dwight Ramos, having played his second season in the B-League, coached by the great Shaw Reyes. Remember, it was Shaw Reyes who led Gilas Filipinas to the final of the 2013 FIBA Asia Cup where they lost to Iran, but that was their first ever FIBA World Cup, the following summer in a very, very long time. And he's now coaching this team in his second major tournament in World Basketball's highest competition. Well, Coach, I'm going to tell you, you can just feel the atmosphere already in this arena. Yeah, no question. I mean, 38,000 fans uh, in, in day one. Obviously, this venue a little bit smaller, but the electricity uh, of this crowd is something that Gillis will feed off of. Already some PBA legends coming into the house. Mark Pingris, along with Gabe Norwood, just walking by. This is going to promise to be an exciting matchup. You know, Fernando, looking at him, he has his game face on today. Yeah, no question. Uh, be interesting to see how they use him. He's had to be more of a perimeter player for them, but uh, I'd love to see them try to exploit some of their size advantages down low, whether that's with Bongo or with Fernando. Well, there you can see 11 times Afro-Basket champions. But then surely a, a team that you also used to coach, Nigeria, sort of then became the kings of Africa. Then it went to Tunisia. And now, of course, everyone's talking about South Sudan, but you know, Angola, they really need to restore their identity as the best team in Africa. Well, the five-time FIBA Asia Cup champions in the early years of FIBA Asia Cup basketball, they were one of the dominant teams. Of course, China went on its supreme rule of Asian basketball. And now our official 10 cent countdown to tip off is underway. Our official partner for this game, 10 cent, letting you all know that this is game day two of a big game in Group A of the 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup. Well, Coach, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back in time a little bit. Four years ago, I spoke to you pre-game when it was the Philippines versus Angola. And unfortunately, you weren't sitting next to me on the broadcast. You were getting your team ready for a big game. What was the mindset of your players against traditionally one of the hot spots of Asian basketball? Yeah, you know, well, back in 2019, even though it was in China, their fans travel extremely well. Uh, it was important to us to try to take the crowd out of the game early on. We were lucky to do so. I know that's a focal point for them here, getting out to a good start, not letting this crowd really feed this Gillis attack. 
Well, again, if Angola are going to spoil the party inside and break the hearts of 10,000 Gilas Filipinos fans, Bruno Fernando is going to have to have a big job. And Dwight Ramos, two big three-pointers in the fourth quarter against the Dominican Republic. You know, as we know with Gilas' offense, you know, it cannot happen again. Jordan Clarkson needs to stay in the game as long as possible. Yeah, no question. They're going to need him to play big minutes. He was probably set to play 39 minutes had he not fouled out in that first game. Well, Fernando Edson in the floor here. Along with Shilde Dundal, Gilson Bango, and Eduardo Francisco, currently member of SLB Benfica, who had a very good year in the Basel Champions League this year with, you know, one of his former teammates. Ivan Almeida currently playing for Cabo Verde here in the FIBA World Cup as well. And right now, it's all about national team duties. Well, Pep Claros knows they must win tonight. This game is up for grabs after the Italians lose to the Dominican Republic. It's going to be anybody's party here. Well, Mabuhay Kamusta. Welcome, Basel fans. Let's get this party started. Clarkson getting the first possession. Interesting, now they have Scotty Thompson, the MVP of the PBA, currently plays with Anebra. Shot in the backcourt. And he's looking to isolate now, getting a handoff. Find a Clarkson. Three seconds now, Thompson kicks out. Ramos had the shot, pulls up in the middle range, doesn't get it. And go look at the offensive rebound now. Now they'll push this. Bounce to a job, a good transition from the Filipinos. That's well, out of bounds, an early turnover. Yeah, you kind of expect that goal to capitalize on the transition there. Yeah, I think a mistake there from the young player, Francisco, uh, really needs to finish that, especially with Clarkson as the lone defender back. He's not looking to take an early foul there. Well, interesting enough, Chartway is really believing in Scotty Thompson. Chart obviously coaching, or being the bottom of the coaching staff in and out, even as a technical director with TNT Tropangiga, one of the powerhouses. Lots of pump takes, nowhere to go, steps in. Gets rejected. Good defense. And now Angola can push this. Well, Dundal misses, but the follow-up still can't get it. Bango gets the rebound. The foul is going to be pulled against Juma Fajardo. Yeah, not exactly textbook transition offense there from Angola. Uh, maybe got away with a little carry there from Dundal. But you see the presence inside. Bruno Fernando ready to rotate. And also, interesting assignment. They put the young 19-year-old Eduardo Francisco starting out at Clarkson. So a little bit more size and length than what he saw in game one. As we mentioned, the the line for Angola at number eight, Jason Mango had some relatively good minutes in the opening game against the Italians. Like we saw against Italy, the Angolans really are going to have to try and take advantage of their transition game. Bango makes two free throws. Thompson here in the backcourt. Got by Dundal. Philippines again, not renowned for their half-court offense. Very exciting team to watch here. They like to play run and gun. And now Clarkson is going to be heavily defended by every angle and player on the floor. Right down the middle. Is it finds Clarkson, Thompson down the middle. By Juba Fajardo at Mabuhai. Salamat Juba Fajardo with a throwdown. And he gets the first two points of the game for Gilas Filipinas. Now the home crowd here rallying behind their home team. Can Angola silence down the critics. Fernando taking on AJ Edu. Bumping goal baseline way off the mark. Gilas looking to push this. Dwight finding an open, gets his pocket pick. Juba comes up with a loose ball. Pump fakes, got to go up with it. Big man, can't get it. A good defense by Angola, but AJ Adu comes up with a loose ball. Finds Clarkson, takes a three. Three is up. Three is no good. But Angola, <laughs> both teams looking quite nervous here, trying to get possession. Yeah, a little bit of uh, frantic pace here from both teams. The electricity of this crowd uh, clearly affecting everyone. Well, just listen to these fans right now. Three is up by Dundell. No good. Bongo gets the offensive ball, but he can't put it back. Gets stripped here, but Angola right now diving on the floor for the ball. Showing their hunger. 
Lovely. Turn it over again, but at the moment, nobody can get a hold of it. And again, Francisco maybe should have gone to that one. Yeah, a lot of contact there. The young player able to come up with that loose ball, but you can see early on Angola all over the offensive rebounds. Thompson here on the perimeter. Got it by Shilde Dudal. Now we're under 10 here on the shot clock for Clarkson. Got it by the young Francisco. Clarkson, though, to go. Kicks out to Ramos. 24 second violation again. The structure of Gilas Pilipinas offense. I mean, coach, very much it's a spread out isolation play. Yeah, and you know, I think this is something they're going to have to adjust to. So you've got the pressure on the perimeter from Francisco, more length than what Clarkson saw in game one. But then behind him, you've got the two bigs, both Bango and Fernando, are able to really protect the rim. So they're going to have to knock down some threes in order to loosen up and make the the bigs have to come out to the perimeter. Well, there's a dunk by Juma Fajardo and Laba Bilabinas, who sold for the big man. That's what got the home crowd in this game. And they're going to need more for that. 16 points from Juma Fajardo. Dow coming off a pick and pop of Fernando. Going in and around, can't get it. Secures the rebound. Gila still going to push this one. Still a two point ball game. Box are getting bumped. They're going to call a foul on the ground. Well, there's almost a hesitation that you felt they were going to call a traveling violation, maybe. Yeah, I thought that was coming too, especially since the play before. Fernando also got a little bit of contact on his drive without a call. On the last two FIBA Basel World Cups, the Philippines have only got one victory, and that was against Senegal in 2014. But they surprised the world with close games. They almost beat Argentina. It was Jason Castro, the blur. And Clarkson loses the ball again. Now Angola looking to push this one. Going for another three. Three is up. No good. They secure the rebound. They got numbers now. Clarkson looking to go all the way. Hangs up. Gets rejected, but Dwight Ramos with a follow up. That's why you always go in for second chances. Yeah, great initial contest there from uh, Gonsalves, but uh, not enough people back for Angola there. Home crowd trying to rally behind their team. Fernando thought about the three-point. That's going to be a nutmeg now. Well, they've given that to the Philippines, interestingly. Yeah, it must have been uh, through the legs there. Not, not a great pass there from Fernando. Philippines with a chance to take the lead. You know one thing, any bucket they get right now, Coach, the home crowd is just going to continue to make the electricity in this building go out of control. Pogoy with the mid-range. Pogoy goes up and capitalizes on the mismatch against Dudal. Angola need a bit of composure now. Defensively, they got to keep the crowd silent. Jason Mango coming up to set the bull screen. He goes for a long two-pointer. Let's go off the backboard. Probably not the best shot in the offense. Yeah, definitely not what uh, Chris Claros wanted there. Pogoy finding Ramos. Pump fakes. Goes in and around, hangs up in the air, and all of a sudden, Aha Pagoy! And he points out at Gabe Norwood, said, I've come ready to play. Four point lead to the Philippines. Then they're trying to set a double high screen for Dudal. They need something here to emotionally try and stabilize that play. That's going to be a kickball violation. It's always tough to play in such, you know, not a hostile environment, but a very passionate, loud fan base. Yeah, no question. You see them going back to the set. We saw them use a lot in that first game. Uh, I believe they called it Nana, but uh, you see Bango on the roll there with Fernando uh, popping behind them. That's one of their sets that they go to quite a bit, but they've got to find something to help ground them right now. Crowd already a big factor in this game. Well, the Cody and uh, do should they do doubt two very good perimeter shooters, but you know, three-pointer would calm the nerves down. But again, another wide-open miss attempt there for Angola. Just under four and a half. Philippines leading by two possessions. Fox has been smothered on defense. Finding Pagoy. Pagoy going for another tough one. White Ramos follows up with an offensive rebound. The foul is going to be called here. Juma Fajardo, this is good for him because he has to solidify position in the double block and draw contact and fouls on the defense. Well, he has the size and strength advantage. You know, these Angolan bigs are 
long and athletic, very mobile, but when teams start to bang, that's something different. They've come with a big lineup now, checking into the game. Seven foot three, Kai Soto. Now, he struggled immensely against Kyle Anthony Towns, but I guess right now they're trying to match with the defense. They're trying to put two centers in the game. Well, you know, Kai Soto can step out and shoot it too, so uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, defensively how he does, but uh, definitely an interesting look here from Gilas. Well, Pagoy had to spin out there, but wasn't able to capitalize. Makonda with a bit of time, hesitates, goes up, avoids the block. And that's going to be possession to Angola. Angola needs to battle for offensive rebounds. Yeah, these have been good looks. Uh, you know, they've been right around the rim on a lot of different stuff. Bigs rolling, guards penetrating. They just haven't been able to finish yet. Well, checking into the game, Japheth Aguilar featured in that infamous 2013 FIBA Asia Cup in which they defeated South Korea in the semifinals. Makonda here on the ball, defended by Dwight Ramos. Goes to the basket, gets rejected. Well, Japheth Aguilar, are you kidding me? The rim protection, he said, Pa'alam, goodbye in Tagalog. Welcome to Manila, but right now, you're not welcome in the Aranetsa Coliseum. Japheth Aguilar setting the tone early. A nice play in the post, goes up, and they could have kidding that one. This is better now, DeSouza will go to the free throw line here for the three-point play. Yeah, really nice uh, baseline out of bounds play there. Just a little back pick for the big, finding DeSouza there on the dive. And they've been around the rim. I think they've had some really quality looks. Just have to settle down a little bit, get some composure when they go to finish. Well, checking into the game, C.J. Perez, another play that you remember. Go back to this game four years ago when you were coaching Angola in regulation. He had the last shot to win the game, and it became, you know, a very tough situation for him at that, that time. Yeah, I think we were all holding our breath. Uh, you know, for anybody that watched that game, he had a pretty solid look from three that would have beat us. Uh, thankfully, he missed it, and we were able to win in overtime. Still a one-point lead here to Gilas. The boy coming up one ball screen. Bonnie Clarkson takes a quick three. Three is up, and the three is good from downtown. Well, JC cooking it up early. Yeah, and I think uh, that's a nice move from Gillis, moving Clarkson off the ball, knowing he'd get trapped a lot as the primary ball handler. Well, down the lane, goes up, and he serves up. Kai Soto with a one-handed jab. Well, De Souza just silences the crowd. Yeah, and Domingos. Great pass there. Well, we got numbers again. They're going to go up, and Francisco gets fouled. Well, interesting enough, we're not seeing Kiko Ravenna here in the back row for Gilas. Yeah, you know, Josie Makanda has really been uh, a pest here for Gilas. He's been able to get by his guy a couple times offensively, and then, of course, here able to rip the point guard there at half court. Well, he just said to Kai Soto, obrigado. Thank you very much. That's a posterizing duck. I mean, uh, Silvio's a phenomenal athlete. Obviously started his career at University of Kansas. Had a great season in France this year. Again, free throws are going to be so imperative for these two teams. You just never want to look back on the game and think the outcome could have been different had you made any free throws. Pep Klados, one of the greatest in international basketball. Makes the second one. Just over three minutes to go here in the first quarter. So Harris just avoiding the eight second violation. Almost turned it over again. And he's looking very nervous right now here in the backcourt. And to have played with some composure. Locks him the foul. That's going to be the 13th foul against Angola. Yeah, and you can see uh, DeSosa ready to jump out into those traps. There's no question. Anytime Clarkson's coming off a ball screen, Angola's going to look to trap him, make him be a passer. Well, then El Paolo, you know, who also played in that game four years ago for you in China in 2019. He's played in three FIBA World Cups, if I'm correct, two Olympics for Angola? Yeah, he's uh, such a great elder statesman for the game in Angola. Still in phenomenal shape right now. But the boy was wide open. High pump fakes. 
Goes in and lifts it right. Kyrie Soto with the hook shot. Well, Kyrie the dream making his announcement here in the game. Yeah, maybe that gives him a little bit of confidence. Didn't have a great game uh, in game one of the tournament. But a talented young player for the Philippines. Well, Domingos goes to the float up. He's going to amble that one, but Angola saved this. Oh, finds Makanda. Makanda's got to force up a Hail Mary three. Can't get it. But the Souza battling the offensive boards, and Kai Soto's going to get called for the foul. And Angola just dominating Gilas on the glass right now. Well, that is Kyrie Soto with the dream hook. Kaiju was doing it for the Hiroshima Dragonflies, but now it's with Gilas Pilipinas. That's beautiful. I mean, he is a skilled big. Uh, a lot of fanfare for him as a young player in the Philippines. He came over to the U.S. with, with the G League Unite for a little bit. Uh, you know, still a very young, talented player, just 21 years old. And now De Souza, he has been a good impactful player for Angola. Look, he can really battle and just compete for offensive rebounds. You know, he can really, you know, in his mind, keep Angola mentally in this game. And they've done that, you know, eight offensive rebounds already in this first quarter. Uh, you know, the bigs of Angola are very tough to keep off the glass. That makes the second free throw. Yeah, and that should be two points. Yeah, yeah he deflected that in. That's two points to shoot it, yeah. That Plaros is saying to the there it counted, so two point play. So Kai Soto has just awarded Angola a three point play essentially. But Bloxon coming off one screen. Bloxon banging down, nowhere to go. Has to put up a circus shot. And again, rattles its way in the basket. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, I can see you shaking your head right now. There's a reason that this man was the sixth man of the year in the NBA in 2021. Yeah, unbelievable finish there. An interesting Angola keeping length on him with Lionel Paolo now matched up. So Domingo struggling from the perimeter against Italy. Man, unable to find his rhythm. Boxing, final Bagoy. Goes for quick three. It's up, no good. Goes with the offensive rebound. That's going to be the fourth and final team foul against Angola. 1.19 to go here in the first quarter. Well, here's a big change coming into the game for Gilas Filipinas. Jamie Malonzo, along with Ren Zabando. Ren Zabando currently playing in the Korean Basketball League. And here's look the, the foul that was committed. Well, Ren Zabando becoming one of three Gilas players to play in the Korean Basketball League. Finds Jaffa. Jaffa goes into the jump hook. Harris goes into the tip off for the energy points. Playing in the favor of Gilas. Yeah, that's twice now. Perez uh, not blocked out there, able to get his hand on the offense rebound. Five point lead to Gilas. Angola. He's trying to find a rhythm here. McCondor in the backcourt. He's doing the lay now. Kicks out to Lynn Paolo. Paolo hesitated. Goes baseline. Paolo goes up. Can't get it. And now Gilas have numbers. There is down the middle. They try to dish off to Kai Soto. Makanda comes up with it. And then now Paolo's going to fail. Oh, he missed the layup. Well, it's becoming a disaster right now here for Angola. But can Gilas capitalize? Ten seconds difference between game clock and shot clock. Gilas without a natural point guard here on the floor. Spinning now. It's with D3, and he's fouled in the process. Oh, coach is becoming freestyle basketball out of control, but you know, Paolo doesn't do his team any favors by contesting that shot. Yeah, definitely a mental mistake there, and that's kind of been this quarter for Angola. Uh, you know, they've gotten great looks, they've had transition opportunities that they couldn't finish. Uh, it's really, you know, the offensive rebounds that have kept them in this thing. Well, poor Lionel Paolo, you got to feel for him because he's one of the ultimate primetime professionals and a great leader for any team. But you know, unfortunately, missing a wide open, no, not taking the three-pointer in the corner in one play, but then missing a layup in transition and now committing this foul. Yeah, you know, I think uh, my heart feels for him. Often players you know, want to 
try to make up for whatever mistake just happened, and, and sometimes that compounds the mistakes. I tell you what, he's such an inspirational person to speak to Lionel Paolo because he's so proud, as we mentioned yesterday, two days ago, to feature for his national team. He's also a very intelligent man as well. Oh, no question. I mean, his work ethic uh, sets the tone for that entire group. Last 10 seconds, Gila leader by seven. Angola want to finish the first quarter on a high note. Domingo now coming off one screen, kicks out. Three is up and it runs its way in and out. But ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the first quarter, it is Gilas Filipinas who will lead this one 19 to 12 in a rematch of the 2019 FIBA World Cup. These two teams compete here in Group A. Both will have to finish their games off this against Italy and the Dominican Republic. But, you know, so far, Char Ray is really going through his entire lineup here in the first quarter. Yeah, definitely coming to the bench uh, pretty often and with some of the younger players. So really good good minutes and experience there. Great to see Kai Soto come in and, and contribute right away. We well, saw the stats at uh, Gila shooting 50% with inside the rainbow. The one three-pointer coming from Jordan Clarkson. Well, this was great defense. That was just a rejection saying, no in me, Casa. You know, one thing that Gola needs to take advantage of, if they get loose balls, they have to use their speed to get out of transition to get more buckets. Yeah, I mean, I think they've created the transition looks they want. They just have not been able to finish them, uh, whether it's jitters uh, or just a lack of focus. But they've been around the paint quite a bit. You know, just shooting 19%, though, for that first quarter. Well, it was the add one play, but, you know, credit to Ara Pagoy. Currently plays with TNT Tropangiga in the Philippine Basketball Association. But that was the one three-pointer turn for JC. Well, look at the dream hook here by Kyrene Soto. Kyrene the dream. A lot of expectations on that young man, of course. You know, played in the G League Ignite, then went to Australia's NBL. You know, credit to him, he's playing at a good level of the Japanese B-League. But before we get there, ladies and gentlemen, there is a QR code for Courtside 1891. Use that QR code and download it so you get the best stream schedules and scores brought to you by FIBA. Currently now it's the 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup. But going back to Kai Soto, of course, he still has a lot to learn in his game. Yeah, no question. Uh, really talented young player. You know, obviously at his size, uh, seven foot three, but he can step out, shoot it. We saw the running hook there. Uh, I think he's still figuring out his game, and you know, will be a big, big player for this national team moving forward. Angola trailing by seven points so far here in the first half, and they turn things around. Justin Domingo is currently in the backcourt along with Makonda. Makonda coming off one bull screen. Trace down the right. Good hands by Kai Soto. Domingo hasn't made a three yet. And still struggles, but another offensive board here for Angola. Domingo hesitates. Hangs in the air. That's a better play from him. So he'll go to the free throw line now for two shots. Yeah, I mean, Angola able to dominate on the offensive rebounds. I believe that brings them up to 10 already in this game. And if it were not for that, they'd be in big trouble. Just struggling mightily from the perimeter. You know, Gilles has to recognize that the only thing they've got going is that rebound. And stay compact, keep your guy in front of you, make sure you're blocking out, finishing every play. Of course, you go back four years ago when Domingo was playing for you in this 2019 FIBA World Cup. What has been the biggest improvement in his game so far? Well, you know, back then he was a, a young 23-year-old, had never been with the national team. Part of what we were trying to do was introduce some of the younger guys into the fold. So, you know, it's great to see him still a big part of, of what they're doing here. C.J. Perez still playing in the backcourt as a point guard for Gilas. Got to get the ball over the court. Be careful that two times could be cool for an offensive foul. Soto throwing a little pass down to AJ Edu. Now I go to look at push this one. Essentially a two possession game as they go for a three pointer. Domingo steps up, takes it, fires it. And that's big time for Justin Domingo. Yeah, you got to admire the confidence there. Uh, had missed badly on his previous attempts, still shooting as they go under on the pick and roll. Now spinning around, nowhere to go here. 
Perez goes for another three point. Perez up and nice response there by CJ Perez. Well, Tons it over now. Alonso finds Perez down low to Kyrie. Oh, Kai again, passing up the opportunity. You can hear the home crowd just saying, throw it down, Kai. Throw it down, Kyrie Soto. Right now, they need the Japanese B-League Kaiju to come out here. Yeah, both teams struggling to finish with their number break opportunities. Five on four there with Domingos down on the ground. Gila's not able to convert. Well, finds the big man. Kai goes for the fadeaway. Nice play there by the big fella. Kyrie Soto goes up to four points. There you can see the bench scoring. Philippines with 13, Angola with 12. Dutton looks for a penetration, kicks out to Lionel Paolo. Paolo gets a three-pointer, Kai Soto with a rebound. Yeah. That's not Paolo's game there. He needs to be patient, and again, compounding the, the mistake of the shot with the foul here. Well, Clarkson getting absolutely smothered on defense right now. You know, almost no way to move. Well, he's got to get used to that. You know, this Angola team has a lot of long athletes putting much more size on him than what he saw in his first game. Early stages here in the second quarter. A.J. Edu matching up again with an NBA player. Clarkson can make this a 10-point ball game, doesn't get it. A.J. Andrew, Salomon, A.J. Andrew. Well, what a big time throwdown. And all of a sudden, that virus has got to pull time out because he's got a problem. A.J. Andrew has just sent a voltage of electricity. There was a three-pointer, and A.J. said, Maga Daga B, good night Manila. That is for you. What a big time throwdown. Welcome to the world of international basketball, AJ. Yeah, and you saw the uh, offensive rebound numbers pop up on that screen there. Really the only thing keeping it Angola close right now. Coach Claros there during that timeout, really uh, admonishing his guys for not playing tougher, looking to block out, talking about that they have the bigs. Those guys need to be physical, make sure they're getting a body on everyone. You know, of course, you know, what offensively can Angola do right now to kind of settle themselves down and build some rhythm? Well, I think, you know, we haven't seen Fernando on the block at all. They've been running this same set pretty often. Uh, you know, the pick and pop from one big. That's a, that's a tough call right there. Uh, but I feel like they can they can find a little bit of consistency with maybe some low post touches. Shooting's always been an issue for them. Uh, so can they get something easy? Yeah, that's a, that's a really hard call. If anything, he's being impeded on his cut. So I'm sure that's frustrating for Angola there. Well, Pep Claros, of course, one of the more experienced coaches in international basketball. And, you know, relatively does a great job of maintaining his composure. He definitely understands. That's got to be an offensive foul, surely. <laughs> oh, coach, I'm going to leave that one to you. Yeah, you know, you see uh, the referee there singling for, you know, potential flop. Uh, that's a tough call there. 11-point well, ball game to Gilas. Fernando with a post up. Fernando hot bump, finds Duke Dallas. Got to make this one. Gets a good to drop and another offensive board. Yes, yeah, well, Bruno. Well, Bruno's saying that he got fouled earlier, but I think he should just be happy that he's got the 3-1 play at least. Well, and you know, once again, the Angolan bigs 
all over these offensive rebounds. Gilas has got to find a way to keep these guys off the glass. Well, Angola definitely dominating offensive rebounds so far. 11 offensive boards for Angola, six for Gilas Filipinas. Kai Soto now picking up his third personal foul. You know, a very promising young basketball player, but one thing he's going to have to adapt to, everybody's talking about the physicality. I think he needs to adapt to the speed of the game. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, there's still a big learning curve for him. Uh, but, you know, playing in Japan at a high level, I think that's going to really help in his development. Well, Kai Soto play for the Hiroshima Dragonflies. He made it to the B-League playoffs. Unfortunately, although winning game one against the Chiba Jets, lost in game three. How is this season done? But the boy looking for the post up. Throws a double team. Kicks out. Edu pump fakes. Fakes the pass. Goes in. Tries to go for the tip in. No good. Now Angola can push this. The Dow finds Bruno Fernando at four. Noche. Good night. Fernando with no regard for the transition defense. And that was a vicious finish there from Fernando. That's what they've been needing on this transition. Well, AJ Adu gave up his last three. Time to get this one. Six point ball game. Just cut this down to a two possession game. Confidence building in the Angolans offense. Gets fouled hard there by CJ Paris. That's going to be the 13th foul against Gilas Filipinas. Yeah, and you see Angola. I mean, look at this, coach. I mean, sorry. That is simply good night, Jordan Clarkson. I mean, he posturized it, put him on a poster. Obrigado. Thank you very much. Yeah, I don't think there are very many players that want to stay in the way of Bruno Fernando getting downhill like that. Oh, you know it's Bruno time when he gets out of transition. Well, Dun Dao now finding an opening. Kicks out. McCurdy hasn't made a three yet. Oh, off the back. Coach, did you pull that one? <laughs> I think right now Angola will take anything that goes into the basket. So certainly a little bit of luck there for Lukeni. Uh, but, you know, with the shooting woes they've had, uh, they'll take it. Well, 5.52 to go here. Sean Reyes of TNT Trabanquiga currently coaching Gilas Filipinas. He wants to talk it over, so let's go and listen to what Sean has to say. Coach Reyes there imploring his guys to rebound. Angola with a 10 point advantage in second chance points right now. Well, Gilas did lead by double digits, but now it's been cut down to three points. And Souza, you know, you talked about this earlier. His offensive rebound has really been the key input for these Angolan players. Yeah, I mean, DeSouza is just a, a load down there. Really elite athlete, uh, had a great season in France, developing and scoring a little bit, but right now impacting the game with his roles and offensive rebound. Well, Thompson back in the full court here. Being defended by Dun Dao. He's just trying to find some composure. Fajardo now stops, kicks out to Scotty. Well, now being guided by Bruno Fernando. Home crowd wanted Juma to take him on. Juma pump fakes. In the paint, big man can't get it. Ramos can't get it either. Well, surely that's going to be a jump ball. That will go back to Gilas with 526. Yeah, credit to Scotty Thompson for sticking his nose in there. Uh, you know, Bruno Fernando, obviously uh, a big boy on those boards. So Gilas trying to fight, do the best they can to compete on the glass. Well, 14 seconds, zero to shot clock. Thompson with a bound miss. They got Juma Fajardo, AJ Edu, Dwight Ramos, and Jordan Clarkson in the game. 
Got to get the ball in bounds. Chuban now trying to bully his way. Goes in. No foul call. Good defense. Well, with Kenny Carley in the game, along with Shirley Dundell, and Cisco as well, the young 19 year old Jilson Bango. Kenny Fernando playing that five roll. Going to find him. Fernando. Down to Bango. Just some pump fakes. Defending his last three, back-to-back -back triples, and he ties the game up at 28 apiece. Yeah, and you know, Lukini is a player that can warm up and, and score, so maybe this is going to put him in the flow that the Angola team needs right now. Ramos turning it over. Now Angola with a chance to take the lead. Well, defensively, Pep Claros came this game knowing that they had to take Jordan Clarkson out of this. To a doubt, big one. Can't get it, but A.J. Edu secures the board. Okay, Gilas restores some order. Lassen now. Step back, D3 takes it, doesn't get it. Out with the offensive board, but that's going to go back to Angola. And we've got a flop warning there uh, on Clarkson. A little bit of a welcome to international basketball moment for him. I'm sure he's not used to that. Here's the second three-pointer from Lucchini the game. Strong to Messi for the perimeter against the Italians, but he is feeling the confidence early. 4.17 to go. Angola finally with a chance. And Angola continuing to go with this roll and replace uh, middle pick and roll action with the bigs. Uh, you know, I'd love to see both of them down low a little bit more. Maybe short rolls for Fernando, but not out on the three-point line as much as he's been. And he's been cooking. Goes for another one. Locks him with a rebound. Angola with two team fouls so far. And JC really out of control. That may have got away with a carry, coach. Yeah, I think he did right there. Again, another D left turnover. Edu hangs up in the air. Doing tower. Can. Lacey up two. Now look out below. One more time. Clocks it with a two handed jab. And this crowd get it back into this one. And that's been an issue for Angola. They've had great transition opportunities that they have not been able to finish in this first half. Well, they almost turned over. But amazing, incredible. Bruno Fernando didn't get the ball from Francisco. He got to feed the big man. Yeah, I agree. There have been a couple of times where Fernando's had early post-up opportunities and the guards have not delivered it to him. Well, that's a two-handed dunk by Jordan Clarkson. And that is Lava Filipinas. Definitely a big time fan favorite here. And not only just in the Philippines, worldwide. That's how great a player he is. Well, getting him out of Juma Fajardo. Uh, coach, we've seen this quite a lot. Sometimes kill us. You know, they have one five second violation call, but here you can see Clarkson trying to find something. Ramos takes a three, throws up, no good. Finally, the offensive boards. Oh, he's going to the ground. But where I was going, coach, was they do struggle at times to get the ball in bound. Yeah, you know, uh, was wondering to see what they were going to run on that last, last side out of bounds with Clarkson in the weak side corner. Uh, but the most important part of any inbounds play is getting it in initially. In that case, like, you know, what do you do? Do you screen away? Do you try to get over? I mean, it, it's very tough because it's almost like they're relying on each other individually to get in bounds. Yeah, you know, I'm surprised that they haven't run more action for Clarkson off the ball. I'm winding down here on the shot clock. Fox twisted, goes for a tough fadeaway, mid-range. Doesn't get it. And going to have numbers. Jim Dow's going to go for three in transition. He nails that one. And gives Angola a one-point lead with under three minutes to go here in the second quarter. Yeah, just a matter of time before these shots start going down for Angola. You know they couldn't stay this cold uh, the entire half. Fox is getting the mismatch here. Way to go in the offense. Kicks out to Dwight. Two seconds now. Tries to go behind the back. Ramos, three, corner. Got it! That's a big time three pointer by Dwight Ramos. Yeah, great response there from Gilas. The fancy behind the back pass from Clarkson, but he's made the right play every time with all the attention he's drawing, getting his teammates involved. Two points of separation. Now just nearly two minutes left here in the first half. 
Denny kicks out to Bruno. Bruno wants to go for three-pointer at Fernando. Steps up big time with a dagger right in the face of A.J. Edu. Yeah, I'm not sure the uh, step back dribble three-pointer is exactly what Coach Claros wanted there, but uh, Angola will take it. Locks is still struggling, another turnover. Trying to get any rhythm here. Bukhetti goes into the Euro step. The follow-up is good, and a nice transition by Angola. As they have a three-point lead, and now Chuck Reyes, he calls timeout. Bruno <laughs> doesn't take many three-pointers, but when he does, well, if it's not, I'll say it again. If it ain't broke, it's don't fix it. <laughs> well, you know, two big threes for both teams. Uh, the basket's starting to open up a little bit for, for both of them. Let's listen now to Coach Chuck Reyes. here for Gilas Filipinos. I mean, looking at the turnovers, am I correct right now? Gilas have 22 turnovers, I believe. No, no, I'm incorrect, and I apologize. Yeah, Gilas still with double turnovers. figures. Yeah, they're still still at 10, which is way too much. You know that the pressure of Angola is, is going to be difficult to handle, but they need to do a better job of staying solid there. You know, the other thing we saw during that timeout, nine fast break points for Angola, but that number could be significantly higher. They've missed a lot of easy opportunities in transition. Gilas has got to do a better job of getting back. 19-5 run for Angola here in the last five minutes. Gilas need an offense. They need something. Only 10 seconds are on the shot clock. Pagoy, Lonnie Clarkson. Clarkson goes for a deep three. That's way off the mark. Goes out of bounds. That will be Angola Bowl. Yeah, it's all freestyle right now here for Gilas. Yeah, not a great shot there from Clarkson. Uh, maybe a little bit of frustration from not having the ball a lot. You know, they have to know if they're going to move him off the ball. They need sets, him coming off the screens to keep him involved with what they're doing. Go with a three-point lead. Good hands by Edu. Potential two for one here for Angola. Good down out. In and around the defense. Steps back, made his last three. Edu towers and secures the board for Quilas Filipinas. This has been the post up that the boy likes. Double team getting ready. Turns around, takes the mid range. Can't get it, but nobody going in for an offensive rebound. Maybe getting away with a carrying violation, but Angola will survive. Angola goes up, missed it. Angola aren't able to get the second chance, but now the last shot here potentially. Clarkson, nowhere to go here. Draws another foul, and again, that's going to be the 14th foul. Interesting that Clarkson didn't slow it down to try and get the very last possession of the first half. Yeah, I'm not sure if he was aware of the, the clock or not. You know, also a rare opportunity for him where he's had the ball in his hands coming downhill. So, you know, the majority of this half, they've had him off the ball. Maybe a little bit frustrated about uh, the amount of touches he's had up until this point. Well, Chomp taking every single post player off the floor right now. Five guards with 12.5 seconds left. No doubt he's put all the shooters on the court. Yeah, and interesting, Angola stays big. Uh, you know, in fact, with three bigs on the floor here. So, a battle of styles for this last possession. Clarkson here, got it by Bango. One thing on his mind. Twist it, turn it, pump fakes in and around, goes up and doesn't finish it. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the first half, it is indeed Angola who have a three-point lead here in game day two of this FIBA Fisher 2023 FIBA Basel World Cup. Well, at the moment, the Philippines coach, 10 turnovers, 
He's had too many in my mind. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, part of that, the decision to keep Clarkson off the ball, I can understand they know that the trapping's gonna come, but that means that the Gilas guards have gotta be able to handle the pressure and find Clarkson in, in space where he can do something with it as a shooting guard. Well, there are statistics right now. Angola is shooting 31% for the perimeter with five out of 16 from downtown. Gilas only three triples with 11 field goals with inside the rainbow. The free throw says it all. It's an interesting stat there, Philippines. Not so much on the offensive end, but collectively both defensive and offensive, leading the rebound so far. Yeah, you know, I think that's a little misleading. With so many missed shots from Angola, there's going to be rebounding opportunities there. Uh, I think the really telling stat is the 11 offensive rebounds that Angola had in that first half. Well, lots to think about for Coach Klados and Coach Chavez. They go and speak to their teams. One of these two teams is going to pick up the first and vital victory here tonight. Well, there's the matchup of the NBA players. Bruno Fernando, two points and six rebounds away from a potential double-double. Well, Jordan Clarkson struggling, of course, with only seven points, two rebounds and two assists. But he's going to have to turn his game around here tonight. Yeah, I mean, I think for Clarkson, uh, you know, a little bit of frustration. Just shooting three for 11, but having to do it much differently than he did against the Dominican Republic. Well, here are some of the key highlights from the first half. Should they do doubt? Stepping up and hitting some big three so far here for Angola. Boxing, twisting, and turning. Nowhere to go, but kicked out to a wide open CJ Perez. Only three triples for Gilas. This is what you want to see for Kai Soto. We talk about the brute strength that he may be lacking, but you said it, your words especially, he is a skillful player. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, a lot of talent there. It's just figuring out how to how to use it. And obviously, this is a big stage for him to, to have to come in there and, and figure out how to score offensively. Well, that was the play that Ara Pagoy, I'd say, was probably lucky not to get the offensive foul court against him. Yeah, and you know, frustrating moment there for Angola. Dundao actually issued a, a flop warning from that. That was the posterizing dunk by Bruno Fernando. That was a no mercy play. Letting Clarkson know I am the better NBA player, but you know, Clarkson may remember that going into the second half. Well, Lucerni now hitting 33 so far here in the first half. And that was a, I mean, the arc on that ball. That went up to the ozone layer and came down. Yeah, I mean, that's a tough finish. Great pass there, but not exactly in the pocket. We're almost having to chase it and you know, almost out of bounds with Fernando closing out. That, that, that's a hard finish. That's what I like to call in mathematics a negative parabola. Just so the arc. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in under 12 minutes for the second half between Gilas, Filipinas, and Angola. Are you ready? Whatever our gender, color, belief, or capability, we are all on the same team. We have the power to change lives through basketball. Together, Together we, we are, are stronger. stronger. No, no matter, matter your, your origin, origin, basketball can bring everyone together. Basketball for good. That's off score from the NBA G League Alley. Oh my goodness gracious! Oh, good evening, Manila. What a way to start here from South Sudan. in the parcel lane, almost comes up, and Mulek goes up. Oh! Garuba from the weak side just, again, defends the ring. Thiago pushes, comes off the full screen in transition, through his legs, a little bit of showtime for two is good. And welcome to the World Cup party, Brazil. Uh, great job, nice start. He played in 10 games for for Brazil during the qualifiers for them to make it to this tournament, averaging just under 15 points. Abbas had a look, doesn't score. Set the comfort, drives in. Are you kidding me? And one. What a 
shot. Shoulder down, head down. Extra pass wow. made his buddy, Toby. Uh, the vision, the execution. Zaze back to her feet. It's a nice finish, but again, it's that man, Sinsaze, setting it up. Good call, gets Shengalia. Neto into the lane behind the back. Oh, what a throw down. And you can see Coach Demir, do I take the timeout, do I not? 10-4 start for Brazil, it's all been at the ring. One more, I will let it fly for Wow! symbolic of the shooting we've seen from Venezuela this first half from the three-point line 12 of 25 in the three-quarter leg bomb nothing but net in their own country, but also in the international basketball world forever.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. The second half is about to get underway here between Gilas Filipinas and Angola. Rematch in the 2019 FIBA World Cup. And next to me is the great Will Voigt, head coach of the Austin Spurs, who coached that Angola team. But, Coach, what have you seen so far from your former team? Well, you know, you've got to uh, be happy if you're Coach Claros, uh, shooting just 32% in that first half, yet going in there with the lead. You know, the big difference really has just been the offensive rebounds, creating all these extra shots. You know, Bruno Fernando being a big part of that, Jill Bongo with four offensive rebounds. And I think they've got to know that they left a lot of points on the table, unable to finish relatively easy fast breaks. So if Gilas cannot figure out how to get back and block out, they could be in some big trouble here. Angola making the most of the transitions, but as you mentioned, you know, turnovers has been a crucial part of how Angola have been able to you know, take advantage from Gilas. Yeah, no question. I mean, the decision to start Scotty Thompson at the point, Luke Clarkson over to the two, uh, he's going to have to deliver better than what he did. Uh, you know Angola is going to pick up in pressure. Uh, it, it, it's a dilemma. You know, if Clarkson's your primary ball handler, that's going to be a much bigger workload for him. But I think Gillis has failed to really create decent opportunities for him at the shooting guard position. Well, Gillis currently at the moment, I mean, it's been, you know, almost chaotic basketball, but that is the Gillis style. That's what makes it so exciting. Their DNA is very much high energy, run and go, but at some point they're going to have to need to adapt to their opponent. But Coach Claros, as you mentioned, you know, where is going to be the multiple positions that he can try to get more input from his offense? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be inter interesting to see if they're, you know, what adjustments have been made at halftime. So, you know, Kiefer Ravina not into the game at all. You know, I thought he gave them good minutes against the Dominican Republic. But if they're going to continue to put Clarkson at the two, they have got to find a point guard that can deliver. Well, there is your energy tracker, the starting five of Angola. But, you know, Bruno Fernando really set the tempo with his posterizing dunk in transition over Jordan Clarkson. It just almost felt the energy had evaporated out of this arena. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, you see the minutes here. Clarkson playing 19 minutes just like he did in the first game. Uh, I think they're going to have to get even more from him, though. Trying to reserve his energy as a shooting guard. Maybe it's time to move him over to the one, put the ball in his hands, and rely on him to make the right play versus the trapping. Well, right next to Jordan Clarkson is Kiefer Ravenna, currently plays for the Lega Sheik Stars in the Shiga Lake Stars, excuse me, in Japan. But again, ladies and gentlemen, there is the QR code for the official basketball FIBA World Cup. Download to get all the best streams, stats, and highlights that matters to you most. FIBA Basketball World Cup app, download it now. Now we saw Kiefer Ravenna, who plays for the Shiga Lake Stars. My apologies to the franchise for getting the name incorrect. You know, he's had two good years in the Japanese B League. Why have we not seen him yet? Well, he's coming on the floor now. Well, there you go. Uh, you know, we had talked about it. I thought he gave them a great lift in their first game against the Dominican Republic. And clearly, the point guard play has been an issue for them in that first half. So let's see if he can start off here, give them a little spark, and help create some uh, some shots here for Clarkson. And go to lead by three points. Well, they will get the first possession in the second half. A.J. Edu on the floor with Kiefer Ravenna, Juma Fajardo, Dwight Ramos, and Jordan Clarkson. Dukeni, Shirley, Dundal, Kokila, Jason Bango, and Bruno Fernando starting here for the Angolans. Yeah, an interesting decision there to go with the three big lineup. Or the follow-up by Bango. Oh, Coach, that might be a bit of Bango time going on. Yeah, once again, dominating the offensive rebounds. But uh, Eduardo Francisco on the bench to start the second half for Angola. Be interesting to see. They've got Bango here guarding Clarkson. Clarkson looking to attack. Nowhere to go. Then he's trying to penetrate. Down low, finds Fajardo. Fajardo gets rejected. Well, Fernando just said, not in your house. Good down now, kicking out to Joseph Bango. Angola have a mismatch down low. Dwight Ramos. We got Kokula. Gets up and another rejection. Well, we got a block party going on. The coach blocks everywhere. Yeah, and you know, really interesting. I'd be curious to know if Angola has ever used that lineup in their tune-up games. Uh, you know, I'm not sure of the decision to go with the three bigs. I thought Eduardo Francisco actually did a nice job defensively, uh, but not a lot of shooting on the floor right now for Angola. 
Rollers' top scorer right now, Bruno Fernando. But hey, you saw Jonah Clarkson is now the top scorer in the game with nine points. Fernando's made one three. Doesn't get this one. Again, okay. go to quick to get the offensive boards. Nice go. Kilo goes up, and a foul is going to be put against Juba. The Angola plays. They want an unsportsmanlike foul. And I just wonder if the officials will review this one. Yeah, definitely a hard landing there. It looked like there was a legitimate play on the ball. Just unfortunately lost his feet when he got the contact. Again, a little starts with the fact that Greenless is just allowing that goal and too many offensive rebounds. Let's have a look at the replay. Hard foul? Yeah, I think that's just a good hard foul. Angola now 8 for 11 from the free throw line. Greenless have only shot three free throws so far this evening. Very reminiscent. The opening game against Dominican Republic. Makes the both. Yeah, maybe uh, Coach Claros here doubling down on the offensive rebound advantage, going with three bigs on the floor. Not a lot of shooting, but you know, able to find their way to the free throw line there. Being heavily defended by Lucchani. This is the this offense sometimes lacks a bit of structure. Right step back, three is up, three is good, it is quite round of time. Reggie Miller in a Gilas Filipinos jersey. Yeah, you saw CJ Perez there with uh, the, the prayer up to God. I think uh, that's not the kind of offense that they want to be living with, but Dwight Ramos coming up with a huge shot. Fourth treble of the game now. Well, McKenny went in for it. Another foul has been called. This is going to be against Gilas again, I believe. This one's against Dwight Ramos, I think. Well, a man who's faced a lot of criticism in the last, you know, I'd say 10 years that he's been coached this team, but nonetheless, Chuck Reyes is going to go down as probably one of the greatest coaches, you know, in Gila's history. Yeah, and a lot of pressure in that position, you know, especially as the host here at this World Cup. The Dobby is heavily defended. Around a few screens, goes for another three, and again he turns down the temperature in this arena. And the home crowd now getting into this one, loving the occasion. Remember the last time the FIBA World Cup was hosted here was 45 years ago in 1978, when the former Yugoslavia won the championship in this very arena. Havana had a bit of an opening there. Nowhere to go. Six seconds here. He's got to step through, puts it a little floater, and he ties the game up for 40 apiece. But again, it's simple basketball from Angola, but chaos for the Philippines. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's five points there, but that, that's hard living. Those two shots uh, have been really difficult. They've got to find a way to execute offensively if they're going to keep Clarkson off the ball. U.S. fans getting into this. Fernando trying to pull his way to the basket, double team coming. Good down with another three-pointer. Can't get it, but another offensive board. I think they're going to call a flop technical against A.J. Edu. So it's going to be one free throw coming up for Angola. I'm sure you can tell that the home crowd definitely agree with that call. <laughs> well, there had been a flop warning previously, so, you know, the official is really all over this. Uh, hard to tell until we see a replay. Let's have a look here. Yeah, I think that's that's tough. I mean, Edu gives up a ton of size to Fernando. Looks like he took that in the chest. Not sure how much there was a, an embellishment there. Well, McKenny makes a free throw, giving Angola a one-point lead. AJ Edu born in Cyprus, where his mother Josie met his father, Oyutunde, and then they moved to Great Britain, where he grew up. Had the ability and, you know, the choice of playing for either Cyprus, Nigeria, Great Britain, but in the end, decided to go with his mother's roots of Gilas Filipinas. And you see Angola staying with this big lineup. They've got De Sosa now in the game. Bruno Fernando essentially playing the three spot for them offensively. The Dow going to the pick and roll, finds Bango. Nice little execution there by Angola. Yeah, and if I'm Gillis defensively, I gotta be more compact of that. They've gotta be aware of the lack of shooting on the floor, maybe potentially even go to a zone. Uh, but, but certainly uh, no way they can let these bigs just roll down the lane like that. 
Well, that's going to be the second personal foul against Shilde Dundao. Yeah, one thing I love about this player is, you know, he will be relentless, give you nonstop full-court man-to-man pressure. Yeah, no question. He uh, He's a special player. I can remember when we had him in uh, one of our earlier training camps, really young 19-year-old kid then, but you knew he was going to be something special down the line. AJ being guided by Bruno Fernando. Gilas offense. Kupa goes for a deep three. Three is up, no good. You can see where the chaos of their basketball offense not coming into play now. Ten seconds on the shot clock for Angola. Down low to Kakula. Excuse me, the Bango. The twist goes in and around, finds the Souza. Can't get it. And that's going to be a 24 second violation. And that would have been Buchetti's fourth three pointer of the game. But he left survive, but you know, coach, shot went up. They still just cannot keep Angola off the boards. Yeah, well, you know, now Angola is huge, so I can understand the problems there. You know, they've got Ramos having to guard essentially a five man in Bongo, so there, there's going to be matchups everywhere. If Gillis is going to stay with this lineup, they're going to have to be really physical on their box outs. I mean, how often do you find a team has five more offensive rebounds in the second half than defensive boards? And Jubak Fajardo goes up with it. The time coming from Jordan Clarkson. I think that's where they have to go. You know, the, the point guards of Gillis have struggled to create for others. I think you've got to put the ball in Clarkson's hands, live with the trapping, and know that he'll make the right decisions. 5-10 to go, and Kiefer Ravenna commits the fourth team foul for Gila, so no more fouls to give here in the third. Go back to the previous thing I said there. Angola, in total, have 29 rebounds, but 17 of those have been offensive boards. Yeah, it's an incredible number. Gilas has got to figure out how to keep them off the glass. They've got to be careful. They don't want to send Angola to the free throw line. The Souza trying to go to work. Pumping, steps through, goes up. It's going to be a traveling violation. Well, a wasted opportunity there for Angola. to see on the replay here. Look like De Sosa dragged that pivot foot a little bit. Well, the question is, did he need to pump making, you know, step through? Could he have gone with a jump hook? I mean, it's one of those in-game decisions in front of 10,000 passionate Filipino fans. You just cannot afford to make a mistake like that. Fox is still the top scorer so far. Four kilos with nine points. Fox hangs up in the air. He draws a contact to Pep Claros. Again, he's going to get a technical foul. Well, Pat Claros sarcastically calling for the traveling violation. And our lead official from Brazil, Guilherme Locatelli, teeing him up and saying, I've had enough of it. Claros needs to keep his composure right now. Yeah, and that's, uh, you know, that's not really the right moment for that. You know, the Angola team's had a fairly decent run here. Not trying to do something that's going to get this crowd into it or get Gilas fired up. Well, now Martin Kaplaskis, our referee from Latvia, just having final words with Clara, saying, look, this is a good game right now. Just keep your composure. Clarkson makes the free throw. So it's going to be three free throws coming up now for Gilas and a chance to take a potential two-point lead with 4.43 to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, and interesting there, you know, they've got Bongo guarding Clarkson. So Bongo traditionally a five-man. He's on the ball and pick and roll, but it was a guard who said it. So Shilda Dundao is in position to switch, but instead they make Bongo go up over the top of the screen. You can see the little bump there uh, on the foul. Hey, you see the <laughs> Claros thinking he's giving an education to our referees, but Look, we have got three of the very best referees in the business right now. Lots of Cubs, Laskis, Salama, Guilherme, Locatelli from Brazil and Latvia. And two more free throws coming up. Yeah, and Pep, you know, Pep knows at the international level, the worst thing you could do to the officials is to do something that the crowd can see. So, you know, the gesture with the hands, anything like that, that's going to get you a technical every single time. Three for the charity strike for Jordan Clarkson. He now moves up to 12 points. Clarkson also has three assists, two rebounds. Gillis fans now finding their voice. Trying to get the ball down to Bruno Fernando. Brian Ramos. Now here they send. I go to the free throw line. 
Trying to go soon. It's way too easy for the NBA superstar. Yeah, and you know, they're just trying to pick on the matchup that they can find between the three bigs. If I'm Gillis, though, and I'm these other bigs, I'm not leaving the paint. So if they want to post one of these smaller defenders, I'm sitting there, make them kick it out. Big three now. There is up, no good. Gillis with no chance to get any offensive boards. And Gola with a chance to retake the lead. And he's been on fire so far from the perimeter. Cross it over down the middle. It's up a teardrop, can't get it. Gillis come up with a loose ball. Made one three, goes for another one. Can drop it right now from the perimeter. The teams just need a little bit of composure here, trying to relax themselves, get into a rhythm, build that identity in their offense. Going back down to Bruno again. Bangle left wide open, pump face goes up and throws it down with two hands. And you know, Gillis needs better discipline there. These post-ups giving them a lot of problems. Maybe going to a zone could be uh, an adjustment they could make. Fernando reaching in against A.J. Edu. So now Justin Domingo is coming in for Dudal. Yeah, Jumai Fajardo. What do we call it, the shell drill maybe? You're bull watching? Well, you know, they, they're just, they're not clear on where their help's gonna come from. And, you know, obviously it's a strange lineup. I'm sure that they never thought they would have to defend against, but they need to have some clarity about where's the help gonna come? What are the rotations gonna be? If anything, just staying compact in the paint's gonna be the most important. AJ Ed is throwing it right away. Now DeSouza is going to finish this one with a one-handed rim rock up. Angola taking advantage of the Gilas turnovers. Oh, the good R. Uh, Pogoy back in the game here for Dwight Ramos. Four point leads by Angola. Trying to find Clarkson. Under 10 here on the shot clock for Gilas. Clarkson pump fakes. Puts up a teardrop, doesn't get it. Fajardo, the offensive board. Takes the pass. Pogoy, three, corner. Doesn't get it, but a foul is going to be called against De Souza. He's going to calm down now. They don't want to overreact with the referees. A great job there by Lucchetti, stepping in to prevent his teammate from overreacting. That's going to be the third team foul for Angola here in the third quarter. Yeah, Lucchetti uh, coming in there, calming down De Souza. You definitely don't want to get a technical right now. Things going your way. Angola's just got to be patient here. The change coming in is AJ. No, Juma Fajardo's going to leave the game. Now, Coach, i got to disagree with that substitution because Fajardo got you two offensive boards in the last position. Well, I mean, their issues have been the post and the paint. So, you know, getting smaller, maybe not the right, right solution. You know, I've talked about it before. I'm surprised I haven't seen them in a zone. Uh, but they need to figure out something with this really big lineup that Angola has stuck with so far in the second half. Sosa picking up back-to-back -back fouls in less than 10 seconds. That's the fourth and final team foul for Angola. No, so change coming in for the Angolans. It's now Fernandez, number 13, will check in for De Sosa. Yeah, an interesting substitution there. I mean, Coach Claro's committed to, to staying with these bigs. Uh, Eduardo Francisco staying on the bench. Oh, blocks him going straight to the bucket and taking Chilso Banco back to school on that one. Two point ball game. Good hands by Perez. They're going to pull a foul here again, CJ Perez. Holding foul by number 17, CJ Perez, LJ, that's his I think they have him on a jersey grab there. The referee uh, was right on that call, so he must have had a good angle. Well, Gilles Filipinas winning five FIJA FIBA Asia Cup championships in 1960, 63, 67, 73. And the recent was back in 1985. And now they are looking for their first FIBA World Cup victory since 2014 in their final game in which they defeated Senegal. On Jimmy Alabag and Jason Castro. Currently sitting right in front of us at courtside with Gabe Norwood and Jeff Chan. And Jimmy Alabag now. Been promoted working with Mike Brown and the Sacramento Kings in the NBA as a player development coach. Player development, I believe. I might have got that one, the title wrong there. No, that's right. He was uh, assistant coach with the Stockton Kings. They're uh, 
their G League affiliate. And, um, you know, great story of him of, of going to the U.S. and really rising the ranks there as a coach. There's now nowhere to go here. Watch clocks and clocks it goes in. Count it. And you can see how one. Well, now it might be Jordan Clarkson time here as he is starting to cook it up. Well, CJ Perez dribbled into traffic, but Clarkson it's almost like the beautiful touch of death every time he tries to kiss off the backboard. Yeah, just got you know lost there a little defensively in transition. And Gola prior to that had done a nice job of really uh, focusing on keeping the ball out of his hands. 16 points now for the former first three player in the NBA back in 2021. Remember the Utah Jazz teammates with Simone Fontecchio, who he'll play in two days' time. Under two minutes. Neither Angola nor the Philippines were able to commit any more fouls. But Kenny's had a hot hand so far. Takes another one. Can't get it. Fox and fights for the rebound. Goes out of bounds. That will be Angola Bull. Well, you love the fight there between Ara Pagoy and Bruno Fernando. But again, the respect and admiration as Fernando helps him back up to the ground. And the home crowd loving this. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I think that's the right call. I think when he got to the ball, his foot was on the line. I think that's what the referee saw there. Tender on the shot clock. 95 seconds to go in the third quarter. Domingo steps back. Deep three. Can't get it. Kai Soto with the rebound. Lewis with a chance to retake the lead. This will be a monumental confidence booster going into the fourth quarter. Finds Perez. Perez looking for Soto. Soto fumbles it. Keeps this one alive. And a jump ball is going to be put, but that will be Gilas Bull with 14 seconds on the shot clock. Baseline possession. I think Fernandez may be arguing with our referee Locatelli from Brazil. Maybe a possible traveling by. I don't think so, no. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Nine seconds to shoot. Well, we got to get the ball in the bound. Finding Clarkson here. Clarkson heavily defended on the show by Fernando. Clarkson mid race takes it, doesn't get it. And now they can push this one ahead. Luke Kenny's going to go up, and Luke Kenny's going to throw it down. Now it's a three point ball game. Yeah, and that's that transition defense biting Gillis once again. And Gola back to their more traditional lineup here. Eduardo Francisco uh, in at the three and matched up with Clarkson here. Well, there's a one handed jam. Gillis fans, anguish, anxiety, knowing they could have taken the lead. He's finding Jordan Clarkson, 16 points here. Clarkson looking to isolate. Hesitation now, Clarkson in the lane. Finds Edu, goes up, and AJ Edu getting it. Two points for Gillis, another assist for JC. And I, uh, I like the decision there, putting Clarkson on the ball. I think you just have to trust him to be your playmaker for the rest of this game. Well, the English, another wide open look at again. Six at one, punishing Gillis' defense. Yeah, big shot there from uh, Domingo. Just kept his confidence uh, from the first half and badly missed that first one, but kept firing away. It's a sixth three-point field goal here. Another turnover, and this time C.J. Perez just throwing an out-of-control pass there. Six-tenths of a second left on the third quarter for Angola, leading by four points. And if, if I'm the Philippines here, I, I want to be picking up full court, not to force the turnover, but just to make sure that you're not giving an opportunity to roll the ball. And now, uh, you know, Domingo, so who it might ever be, He's going to get a, a legit half court opportunity versus you know some full court heave. Well, Domingos now puts up a full court shot. Almost got it. But ladies and gentlemen, at the end of third quarter, Angola holding on to a four point lead here in game day two of the 2023 FIBA Basketball World Cup. 
Oh, again, you mentioned, Coach, the transition play from Angola, converting turnovers into those points in the fast break has been the underlying factor that's put them in the lead so far. Yeah, you know, that's what they do well. Well, here are some of the key moments from the third quarter. Follow up there by Gilson. Bango time. But he didn't box him out. And in the end, he punishes Gilles front court. That was a nice play. The rejection coming from Bruno Fernando. Well, they need Jordan Clarkson to put on that Puso mindset. He's to play the step back three-pointer by Dwight Ramos. So far, only four three-point field goals for Quilas Filipinas. Well, Bango's been key so far here in the third quarter for Angola. Yeah, Bango having to do it all. Angola going with that ultra big lineup with essentially Bango uh, at the three and matched up with Clarkson defensively. Uh, did a nice job there. Fourth quarter coming up. Whoever wins this game will give themselves a chance to maybe get to the qualification round and will lead them to the quarterfinals. But you know one thing, this home crowd, they've got to come now and come prepared to support their team for these final 10 minutes. Yeah, and interesting to see uh, what Coach Claros is going to do here with his rotations in the fourth quarter. We've already seen a lot of big changes from the first game. Montero, who started in that first game against Italy, not playing at all at this game. At times, they went with the ultra-big lineup. You see Leonel Paolo now back on the floor with Eduardo Francisco on the bench. Coach Claros has shown he's he's willing to try uh, you know any combination that he thinks is going to be effective in that moment. Fernando was scoreless in the first quarter, but then picked his game up in the second. But now Lionel Paolo, you know, who struggled in the first quarter immensely, has checked back in for the first time here in the second half. And he's going to be asked to guard Clarkson, so important minutes uh, for him to start the fourth quarter. Little on the low block now, got it by A.J. Edu. Goes up again, too big, too strong. And Bruno Fernando is just too good. Yeah, and I, I think that's a great play coming out of the quarter. You know, I've uh, been hoping to see him on the low block a little bit more. Well, AJ Edu had the three-point, and it's going to be a travel violation. <laughs> Defensive presence of Bruno Fernando. You can feel the anxiety, the anguish, and at times a disappointment from these Gilas fans. Yeah, and you know, Gilas going really small here, so they're going to have to uh, do a great job at controlling the glass. That's been an issue for them all game. Jason Domingos. Swinging from the perimeter in the game against Italy. Remember, Angola defeated Gilas in 2019. That's Domingos. Domingos, the no man's land, hits the front iron. That goes out of bounds, but that's going to remain. Angola ball. It's the same story again with Gilas Filipinas. I mean, rebounds, they just struggle to keep everybody off the boards. Yeah, you know, it's been an issue all game for them. Uh, you know, going small here, there's going to be a lot of tough blockout responsibilities uh, with their matchups. Fernando pump fakes. It's got to be a, it's a blocking foul against Kiko Ravenna. That's going to be the first team foul for the Philippines here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the right call there. Sideline ball to Angola. Six point lead to the visitors. That's Fernando. Now, well, good defense by our progress. Surely that's got to be an unsportsmanlike foul, but I think they're going to keep this as a regular one. I'm surprised they don't have that as well. Interesting one there, because it was an off the still in transition. Normally you do see that, you know, cool made right away. I mean, coach, come on, what do you think? Yeah, that's that's definitely definitely an unsportsmanlike. You know, not very often you wouldn't see that be called in international basketball. Kind of being smothered on defense by Domingos. 
Soto now. Finds Cloxon. 10 here on the shot clock. Cloxon's going to get fouled on the ground. It's going to be against Lionel Paolo. And that's on Paolo. That's going to be his third personal foul, I believe. Yeah, Paolo just uh, caught on the floor there, although it did look like he might have stripped the ball prior to that, but bodies everywhere. Philippines need a bucket on this possession. They trail it by six points. Boxing will inbound this one. Got it by Lionel Paolo. And you see Paolo all over there on his denies. Boxing now kicks out. Pagoy had the three. Picks up the floater. The floater is good. A big time shot by Aaron Pagoy. Goal is still with a four point lead, though. Didn't have the momentum. Home crowd trying to get into this one. You must see this 2 3 zone defense. Lucchetti now. Open up the three. Three is good. Now, Gola. Big time shot. Seven point ball game. Bennett now trying to go to the basket out of control, but he'll go to the free throw line. You know, this is interesting because in the games that we have seen, Gilas and Tune ups, they've never put their teams in foul trouble early in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you know, uh, they've got to find a way to get points on the board. It's been a struggle for them all night. You see here, uh, Lucchini knocking down a big three pointer, but, you know, I, I, I just think they haven't found their rhythm this whole game. Uh, you know, Clarkson being off the ball, never really getting a lot of clean looks. Whatever the decision is uh, for keeping him at the two, their point guards have not been able to create looks for him. Well, Bennett missed the first free throw. Yeah, now is not the time to have any genius or nerves. The anxiety in this arena, Gilas knowing they must win this game. If they had to have any chance of qualifying. Yeah, and interesting here, we see Montero for the first time in this game coming in in a big moment here in the fourth quarter. So, you know, Coach Claros uh, coming with the entire entire lineup tonight. Still a six point ball game. Let's go back to a match man defense. Domingos now trying to go in around the defense. Three, the three is up, and Angola. Now it is officially a nine-point ball game. The tide has been turned. Lucchetti, he is on fire at the moment. Clarkson, so nowhere to go. Takes a tough one. No good. And it's looking doom and gloom right now for Gilas Filipinas. Yeah, you know, just no rhythm at all. Clarkson having to force a tough one there. They've got to figure out something offensively that's that's going to spring him open a little bit. Even just some simple middle pick and roll stuff for him. And again to Migos, making it an 11-point ball game. And Chao Reyes has to pull a timeout. And Gola have silenced the Araneta Coliseum. Remember, it was Gilas who had an 11-point lead in the first quarter. And then they tried to shift and change their lineups. Multiple players coming in, and then they just lost that rhythm. They have never got it back ever since. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's been some curious rotations there for Gilas. Uh, they just have not figured out a way to find a rhythm offensively. Clarkson, I'm sure, frustrated.
Luke Kenny's been on fire so far. He has been cooking from the perimeter. You know, what's interesting about this game, if Angola wins this one, it wouldn't necessarily be all over Aguilas Filipinas because with Italy losing today, Aguilas needed to beat Italy in the final game. And having a Dominican Republic sweep this group, it could have three teams all be one and two. Yeah, no, exactly. And, you know, every possession is going to matter. Obviously, they're thinking about how to win this game, but point differential could become a, a very important aspect of uh, the final group standings. Well, Thompson back into the game here for the first time in the second half. Find Juma. And that's going to be the fourth and final team foul against Angola. This is good for Gila, so any more fouls here will send him to the free throw line. And it's going to get called for the foul. Yeah, sometimes you think about the rotation of the Gilas players and you, know, you just wonder who is the best five for this team. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, you hope to come into this tournament knowing that, you know, a short short uh, tune-up with Clarkson in their camp. I think they only have 10 days. Locks it for three, can't get it. The foul is going to be caught against Juma Fajardo. And at the moment, Gilas, I mean, they are just searching for officer at the moment. Yeah, you see them coming back with Thompson at the point guard. They seem committed to keeping Clarkson at the two. Uh, but they've got to figure out a way, even just a simple zipper set, just a, some little bit of movement to get him the ball and then into middle pick and roll. 11 point lead to Angola. Well, good three. Montero takes it. Soto Towers with a rebound. He must have got to push something down. Awesome running around the defense. Goes in all the way. He missed a layup. But they got to get back on defense as Luke Kenny's trying to push. He's found in transition, so two free throws coming up. Yeah, Clarkson uh, obviously frustrated there. One of the easier shots he's had all game long. But again, Gila struggling with the transition attack of Angola. You know, they had two guys back there. Need to be more disciplined, not foul. So two free throws coming up for Luke Kenny. has been a game changer so far. Looks like our referees are going to take a look at this one. I didn't, I didn't see an unsportsman like. should know better yeah that's a that's a really bad mistake there they had two defenders back really should have just controlled the the break like that and at the end you see him reaching down there and grabbing the arm Gilas is going to have to find some composure right now everything not going their way but you know still with the free throw now 12 point game but that's still within reach especially with a guy like Clarkson who can put a team on his back uh, they've got to stay composed Six minutes and ten seconds. Lukeni about to put Angola up by 13 points, but they're going to get the ball back. Oh, Lionel well, Paolo will inbound us here for Angola. It's now a 13 foul for Gilas, just when they had an advantage against Angola. Here goes another three-pointer, can't get it. Ramos with a rebound. And he gets something in transition here. 
Jake Soto. Tops it three, corner. Just can't get it. Nothing dropping here for Gilas. Yeah, that's a pretty decent look there from Thompson. Uh, you know, Gillis is not able to buy a basket right now. Good hands. Just want to pick up a foul here, though. He goes all the way. It's up a circus shot. Another good defensive play. Now, can they push something? Finds Ramos. Ramos. Juma Fajardo. Now Kai Soto gets the out one. And Kyrie the dream. Could this be the impetus, the adrenaline that Gilas needs? Yeah, maybe Soto's the answer for them. Uh, you know, he's been able to come up with some big baskets. And they've been struggling offensively. So we need to find some sort of counter to Clarkson with all the other guards struggling right now. A young man who's had high expectations, and you know this, from the days he was going to practices with his father when his old man played for NLX Road Warriors. It's been a tough ride so far, but can he be the difference? He doesn't get the three-point play. Only with an 11-point lead. He goes down the lane. Montero wide open, three, takes it, doesn't get it. Almost lose the rebound. Whole crowd trying to rally behind their team. And I must put a double team now. Goes out of bounds, and it's another turnover yet again. No composure from Gilas Filipinas backcourt. Yeah, and uh, you know it's been the same issue all game long. I think you got to have Clarkson as your primary guy. Sure, Angola is going to be trapping him, but he'll be able to make these other players better. When you've reversed those roles, they just haven't been able to create looks for their teammates. Tough turnover there from Ramos at this moment. I think this has been an identity crisis here for Gilas, you know, not knowing who is their true point guard. Scotty Thompson starting in the lineup. Keeper, no, CJ Perez didn't play the Dominican Republic game. Play more minutes. Keeper Ravenna not playing until the second half. Yeah, and you see Gillis going small here. Soto at the five and four guards around him. On the turnover. And CJ Perez unable to keep control of the basketball. Home crowd getting frustrated now. 13 point lead. Been down the lane. Finds Montero. Montero goes up and another foul called. You see Bruno Fernando there. Angola is doing this with him on the bench right now. So Gil is really uh, struggling to find a way to get back into this game. Coach Reyes trying just about everything in terms of lineup combinations, but they need to settle on something. I think featuring Clarkson as your ball handler, do they have enough shooting right now to just go spread, pick, and roll with Soda setting? Something simple, but Clarkson has got to have the ball in his hands for this last four minutes. Potentially about to be a 15-point deficit if Montero makes his free throw. They got Jamie Malonzo playing the power forward role. A short on the free throw. Malonzo secures it. And this is problem right now. Not taking care of the basketball. Malonzo fresh off the bench. Quick three. That has been the story of the night here for the Gilas Filipinas players. Yeah, and that's the dilemma for them. Clarkson goes on to the ball. They go middle pick and roll. He's trapped. He makes the right play, releasing it. And then the guards cannot convert when it comes out. I don't know that that necessarily has to be a catch and shoot three, especially since he had just, you know, Milonzo had just entered the game. But it's the initiation of the offense. They're going to have the defense in rotation after that trap. They have to be willing to attack these closeouts, try to put some pressure on the rim. Renzo Bondo checking into the game, getting a standing ovation from the home crowd. Another foul committed. Yo, Coach, but the, this is the hard part for Gilas. The PBA doesn't actually sort of assimilate under international rules. It's very similar to the NBA. So right now on the floor, you have you know, two PBA players. Bloxham being in the NBA, Soto being in the B League, as well as Renzo Bondo playing KBL. You know, at that point, you can't afford to commit a foul like that when you've already put your, play, your team in the penalty. Yeah, there's no question. They have to show some discipline here defensively. 
Uh, still some time left in this game, but uh, you know they're compounding the mistakes with with fouls in that instance. Clarkson clearly frustrated, and you know they've just been throwing things at a wall right now, seeing what will stick. But they have to have something that they can go to here in the last four minutes. 15-point ball game. Angola. Maybe under four minutes away from getting that first victory. Again, almost throwing it away. Blocks it now. Hesitates, goes in, kicks out. Thompson, big three. Just can't get it. Another foul committed. That's on Soto. That's going to be his fifth foul. No, it's on Malonzo, I believe. It's another foul. Just, I don't know what to say. You're inviting Angola to go back to the charity strike. Yeah, and then, you know, the. The fouls are so frustrating. You know, obviously you're disappointed that he doesn't knock the three down. Clarkson continuing to make the right read, but you cannot compound that by then fouling up the floor like that. They have to be able to generate some turnovers, try to find something in transition, uh, you know, get something going there, but putting them to the free throw line again and again and again is not the solution. Deuce just comes to the charity strike, made the free throws to Souza. No problem with that one. I think that's going to be a violation of Souza because he fakes. Hey, De Souza hesitated, which you can't do, of course. Yeah, interesting. I feel like the outside official almost had somebody coming in early from the top. I don't think the Sosa did that on purpose, so I think he was thrown off by something. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. Jackson almost turned it over. Draws a contact. He goes to the free throw line now for Gilas Pilipinas. Yeah, but Gilas now, you got to surely put up some full court pressure, though, if you're going to try and slow the game down. Well, absolutely. They, they, they need to actually turn the tempo up, so they need to be picking up full court, trying to speed Angola up, trying to get some turnovers, uh, not fouling right away. Still time left in this game. Tequila says they got no more fouls to give. So cut this down to a 14-point deficit. Makes them both. Substitutions yeah. usually killing quite erratically here in the fourth quarter for Gilas. All right, Pagoy and AJ Edu back into the game. Go to De Souza. Kicks out. Jim Dow with a pump paper. Throws it away and a bit of glimmer now for, of hope, excuse me, for Gilas. Yeah, and that's what they need. You know, a little bit of aggression, forcing the turnover. They got to play up tempo. I'd just be coming into, you know, early drag screens for Clarkson and, and live with what he does. Clarkson going all the way, no foul call, but now he makes it a 12 point ball game. Three minutes left. Can Angola hold on? He must need to stop sending Angola to the free throw line. We don't got it by AJ Edu. Zabando with Kenny, gets a rejection. It's got to get in the head. Finds a Bondo and goes up. And again, no foul pulled. But now it's a 6-0 run for Gilas. Home crowd back in this one. But Boy doesn't need the foul. Discipline's what Gilas needs. Listen to this home crowd. And an offensive foul. Well, De Souza's going to be infuriated. And good job now. Pep Claros calling timeout for Angola. 6-0 run for Gilas Filipinas. Yeah, a little bit of life here from uh, Gilas. Good to see them pick up, pressuring the ball, able to force some turnovers. Got him with the elbow. Yeah, that's definitely the right call. The official had a great angle on that. Well, that is an excellent decision by Guilherme Locatelli from Brazil, our lead official. Esto 
Dito, dito. Sa para kaliwa yung pasa mo. Oh, dito. On this side. Well, there you can see what basketball means in this country. Basketball, probably the oldest country in the world to have, well, sorry, the country to have the oldest professional league, the PBA. But what these fans want to see is Gilas Filipinas playing at the highest level. Yeah, no question. I mean, this crowd's still energized and behind this team. Can they come up with a big basket here, force a few more turnovers, make this a tight game down the stretch? But the ball's got to stay in Clarkson's hands, keep things simple, spread, pick, and roll, let him make decisions out of it. Well, Lionel Paolo defending Jordan Clarkson. Good screen by Renzo Bondo, get him open. One crowd behind Jordan Clarkson. Going to Kai Soto. Soto got it by Jilson Bango. And trying to go in and around the defense. Finds AJ Edu. AJ Edu goes up and hits the air one. What about Filipinas? Puso. The time time coming for Jordan Clarkson. Yeah, and you can see what happens, right? You put the ball in the hands of your best player. He's creating everything for everyone else, and that's why you brought him onto this team. You know, those roles are reversed. I just don't think the guards of, of the Philippines are quite at that quality level to, to create for them. So, you know, great play here from Clarkson, and now pressure starting to mount here for Angola. Well, what an atmosphere we have in this arena. Almost a minute ago, Coach, this arena was done. People were leaving for the exits. Lionel Paolo checking out as he's supposed fouling out of the game. Big possession out. Not get the free throw. But it's got to be a retake. Well, it was an illegal entry. Not sure who, who committed that one, but... Well, Gilas have missed three free throws so far tonight. Nine for 12. Can AJ Edu cut this down to a seven-point ball game? And interesting here, uh, you know, Coach Claros has gone with the three-guard lineup here. So Lucchini, really a combo guard. He wants the ball handlers on the floor. Now, on the flip side of that, they've kept size defensively on Clarkson all game. So I assume it'll be Lucchini who gets the matchup there. But now Clarkson, for the first time, is going to have a smaller defender on him may be able to bulldog his way into the paint. Well, the young man who was paid homage by Carl Anthony Towns in his first game. Can he step up and make the big free throw? Got it in the end. Three-point play, seven-point deficit. Home crowd rally behind. Renzo Pondo. Look at the pressure against her Dow. Tanner on the shot clock. Domingos coming off the screen. Kicks out to Bruno Fernando. Fernando in the lane, puts up a tough one. He must come up with it. And slows it down here for Jordan Clarkson. Clarkson looked for an opening. Abando, big three, takes it, doesn't get it. Goes out of bounds. Well, that's a very interesting decision. Now, coach, if he made that one. Yeah, this that crowd was about to explode, but they need to turn around here. Full court pressure, try and see if they can force a turnover here. I don't think they can afford to let a whole shot clock go off. Great defense coming from Renzo Bondo. Another offensive foul. Angola choking under intense pressure. Giving Gilas Filipinas hope. This is incredible. And they're going to review this. Well, yeah, that might possibly, possibly, I'm saying. Yeah, there's definitely a chance of that. You can see the hands coming up toward the head. And what a break that would be for Gillis right now if uh, it is ruled an unsportsmanlike foul. Well, yeah, he got him with the elbow. <laughs> the 
Let's see the decision now. No, regular foul. Well, a bit of a break there for Angola. Definitely could have been called an unsportsmanlike foul, but uh, they need to find some composure here. Interesting to see they're not picking up full. I, I would assume they would want to be uh, denying Clarkson here. Well, Clarkson needs to be Aguila Superman right now. Trying to go into the Euro step. Finds Kyle Soto and a foul has been committed. So Kyrie will go to the free throw line here for two shots. Yeah, and I think this is the offense that's been missing all game for them. Just keeping it simple, keeping the ball in Clarkson's hands, letting him make the plays based on how the defense is guarding that pick and roll. So expect to see this down the stretch. I'm also surprised too, you know, Angola has kept size on him all game long for the first time going with a smaller defender. Will they come back? Maybe offense, defense substitutions, get Francisco back on him, look to trap him a little bit more defensively. Well, one player I've got to give a lot of credit to, Renza Bondo's full court defense on Dundowell. Justin Domingos has been a game changer here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, no question. He's been a real spark plug. Uh, you know, his athleticism on display here. Kyrie makes the second one. Five point ball game. One minute and six seconds to go. Home crowd now. Getting behind this team. Trying to go to Fernando. 7 0 on the shot clock. Double team cut with it left. Gonzalez wide open. Got it! Boa noche! Good night, Angola! That is for you. Well, they went for the double team with Renzo Bondo. And in the end, Bruno Fernando kicks it into the corner. That is obrigado. Thank you very much. Yeah, you see a uh, bit of a mistake there by R.R. Pogoy. Really shouldn't have left the corner. They already had their big man down in low position. When he went, nobody expecting it, so therefore nobody rotates to take that corner three away. Point it could be the curtain call here that you know stops this from being a potential thriller in Manila. But you know, Renzo Bondo did he need to come over? It was almost a triple team if you think about it. Yeah, well, it was uh, you know, RR Pogoy actually who came over on that baseline trap, didn't need to do that. You know, had the big already down there because he just went on his own, nobody's expecting it and able to rotate down. Credit to Gerson Domingos though for knocking down the big open three. Well, my apologies to Renzo Bondo, you're absolutely right, coach. It was Roger Pogoy. He decided, you know the crazy part about it was it was either AJ or Dua, Kai Soji was ready for the help side. But again, you left him English wide open. Yeah, it's a tough mistake there. They need an easy uh, or quick basket here. Locks it goes up, avoids the block. And again, Angola come up with it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are not going to get the thrill in Manila as Joseph Bango throws that one down. And that's a big time dunk. And Bruno Fernando, his response says it all. AJ Edu, AJ Edu connects to that one, cutting it back down on eight point bowl game. Well, history will repeat itself here tonight. Four years ago, in the final game of the group stage of the 2019 FIBA Basketball Cup, Angola left with a victory in overtime. They're going to do the same thing here tonight at the Aranetta Coliseum. And Pep Claro saying to his players, keep scoring. Points difference is going to be crucial. Finds Bango, Bango goes in. And the follow-up, that's going to count. That is the cream of the crop there. Bruno Fernando with the exclamation point. Ten-point victory for Angola. They win this one, 80-70 to against Quilas Filipinas. Yeah, really, really big win, obviously, for Angola. 
uh, came with a little bit of everything in this second half. You start them, you know, start out the second half with those three bigs, very unconventional lineup that they rolled out. And, you know, throughout we're, we're finding ways to frustrate Clarkson in that Gillis offense. Really, not until the final three or four minutes did Gillis find any kind of rhythm offensively. And at that point, they had just dug too big of a hole to climb out of. Well, Jordan Clarkson, phenomenal performance for him to get 21 points, three assists away from a double-double, had three rebounds. But Bruno Fernando prevailing relatively low scoring game with the leading scorer was Luke Kenny tonight. I mean, he was phenomenal. Four for eight from the perimeter. And Angola, nine three-point field goals. Those fans, they're going to enjoy their own thriller in Manila tonight. Yeah, no question. You know, Gilas finishing uh, just 18% from three. That was a big story of it. You know, when Clarkson had to be the playmaker, not a whole lot of uh, uh, receiving shooters on the other end. Well, there are the final stats. Gilas with only four three-point field goals. And in the end, it was Angola who out-rebounded the Philippines. Both teams with 17 assists. Interestingly, Angola, 10 steals. That just tells you the story, doesn't it? Yeah, well, that's what they do. They pressure you. They try to get you out of your rhythm, able to force turnovers, get uh, get some easy baskets that way. Second top scorer. Nobody else in double digits for the Philippines. Clocks him at 21. There you can see Lukeni with 17. Domingos with the 15, well, 15 points, but the dagger with the final three in the corner. And Bruno Fernando chipping at 14. Yeah, no question. Uh, you know, Jerson uh, Gonsalves, a big stretch there. When he got hot, seemingly putting the game out of the way at that, at, at that point in the fourth quarter. Gilis, you know, credit to them for fighting their way, making it interesting down the stretch. But also should be noted, 20 offensive rebounds for Angola in this game. Just too many extra possessions for Angola. Well, here are the top plays in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you mentioned this earlier, they went on a nice run in the beginning of the fourth before the Gilas comeback, and they didn't have Bruno Fernando on the floor. Yeah, and you know, I think uh, Coach Claros at that stage was probably just trying to steal whatever time he could get with Fernando, and, and, and lo and behold, that group went on a really nice run. That's when Gonsalves uh, got hot from the three. Now, it's not all over here in Manila for the Philippines, because having said it, if the Dominican Republic defeat Angola, they will go top automatically in third place, which will mean at that point it could be, could be all up for grabs between those last those three teams being Angola, Philippines, and Italy, if the Philippines then defeat Italy. Yeah, and, and you know, that's why it was surprising that, you know, that final 20 seconds where it seemed like Gillis just kind of gave up. Those points are going to be important because the thing you have to consider too, Angola can win the group if they beat the Dominican Republic. So the Dominican Republic has a lot to play for. It's not like that they will be resting and trying to hand an easy win. So this entire group really up for grabs in terms of who will finish first or second. Well, here is the offensive board. Kyrie Soto getting the at one. Wasn't able to convert the three-point play. Coach, I got to ask you, I mean, the substitutions and how the you know, players are coming in and out for the Philippines, I just couldn't tell you in my perspective who is the top five. It's just because the thing that concerned me was Renzo Bondo came on and that full court man-to-man -man defense for me was the game changer. Uh, he definitely had a huge impact there and, and it really did look like they were trying to find some sort of identity throughout the course of the game. It's never the way you want to do it. Obviously, in that first game against the Dominican Republic, everything just stayed in the hands of Clarkson. We knew it would be different tonight. We knew Angola would trap, make things hard. How would they adjust? And I don't know that they really had that answer. Well, there was the dagger. Jesson Domingos, who defeated the Philippines in 2019, and his second victory against Gilas in four years at a FIBA World Cup. Well, there are standings. It could be very well by the end if the Dominican Republic go undefeated. We have three teams that go one and three, but that's all going to be decided in the final day of this group. Well, for now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you for joining us. But to all of our fans here in the Philippines, Pa'alam and Magadang Gabi, and to all of our fans back in Angola, it is going to be Buenoche.